Hello! I'm Liz, one of Darius Reference Librarians, and welcome to another episode of Misinformation Busters. Once a week, we tackle a rumor or false slash misunderstood information, and we try to separate fact from fiction. This week, we're taking a break and having a history lesson on a group that went from fringe to dangerous. Om Shinrikyo. So, what's the story? For most people outside of Japan, Om Shinrikyo is associated with one major terror attack the Tokyo sarin gas attack. On March 20th, 1995, all the members left bags and packages of sarin gas on the cars of five trains traveling through the Kasumigaseki station, the subway station that was located under the main hub of central government in the city. This attack killed 13 people and injured over 6,000. In the same month, police began to search on facilities all over the country, and on May 16th, 1995, their leader, Shoko Asahara, was arrested. Over 20 years later, after trials and appeals, Asahara was executed in 2018, along with over 20, 10 of his followers. The Tokyo attack remains the worst terror attack in Japanese history. So, what are the facts, or in this case, how did it get to this point? Let's start with the leader, Shoko Asahara. He was born Chizuo Matsumoto in 1955, one of the nine children of four Tatami mat maker. He had poor eyesight as a child and even went to a school for the blind. He left school at 19 to become an acupuncturist. He actually wanted to go to medical school, but his poor eyesight was a hindrance. He also had dreams of going to Tokyo University, but failed to get in. He also had an anger problem and a reputation for bullying classmates. In 1982, he was arrested for selling natural cures that didn't work through his acupuncture practice. After that, he traveled to India. Two years later, he came back to Japan. A yoga New Age guru named Shoko Asahara and Aum Shin Senokai was formed and renamed Aum Shinrikyo in 1987. It was officially recognized as a religious organization in Japan in 1989. If Shoko was anything, it was persistent and persuasive to the point of brainwashing. So what were the beliefs of Aum? Well, they combined the teachings of Buddhism and Hinduism and skewing worldly possessions, purifying sinners, finding inner peace and power. And followers were not just the New Age types. Many of the followers were students of elite universities, the ones that Shoko could not get into. They're people just disaffected by corporate culture, and they saw Shoko as a figure of truth. And he was worshipped as a deity, even claiming to be both the second coming of Christ and the first truly enlightened one since the Buddha. If anything, this kind of sounds like Charles Manson and Spawn Ranch. Only Shoko attracted scientists and engineers. Uh, put a pin in that. Om was already a cult by the late 80s, but it became a doomsday cult as Shoko started to incorporate apocalyptic Christian teachings. And everyone was told, just trust Shoko. The cult started to isolate members from their families and force members to donate more money. And if they did not, they'd be held hostage. In February of 1989, a member named Suji Taguchi tried to leave and was strangled by other members. Shoko personally ordered his death. Around this time, a lawyer named Tsutsumi Sakamoto started to publicly challenge Am and call them out on their, at very, this point, very blatant cult-like activities. And in November of 1989, he, his wife, and their one-year-old son just disappeared. It wasn't until after the arrest in 1995 that members confessed to murdering the family and hiding the bodies. The members were so intent on hiding their crime, they smashed the victim's teeth. All members also tried to run for office in 1990, after the murder took place. 24 members ran for parliamentary positions, but none of them were elected. And that turned the tide towards more violent action. Remember how I mentioned that Om had members that were scientists and engineers? Well, at this point, they had that, followers all over the world, and reportedly assets in the millions. This allowed Shoko to pursue his plan of Om carrying out chemical attacks. According to former member Yoshihiro Inoue, the ultimate goal was to, quote, take over the world by spreading sarin in Japan and the United States, killing the emperor and winning over Russia by bribery. And actually, Tokyo was not the first chemical attack. In June of 1994, members released sarin gas in Matsumoto Nagano, killing eight. And the only reason they were not caught was because the attack was not immediately linked to the cult. Luckily, the attack in Tokyo led to their arrest and, as it appeared, the end of their reign of terror. Unfortunately, it was too late for some. In February of 1995, the cult kidnapped Kiyoshi Kariya, the brother of a wealthy woman who escaped Om. They held him hostage, and when he did not reveal his sister's location, the cult murdered him. It's thought that Shoko ordered his death as well. So, 
after all that, you would think that Am Shinrikyo was just gone, right? Unfortunately, no. While the government did force the group to dissolve in 1995, the members that were not implicated and did a lot to distance themselves from Shoko eventually restarted the group. It's now known as Aleph and still exists. And there are splinter groups as well, the largest one being Ring of Light. These groups are allowed to practice in Japan, but they are highly monitored. So, what is the rel what relevance is on to us here in the United States, outside of my weird obsession with cults? Which, look, I think the best way to avoid getting sucked in by a cult is learning about them and how they work, so you're welcome, everyone. But in all seriousness... Om did have followers in the U.S., and more importantly, the U.S. is currently dealing with a new fringe movement, QAnon. And there are some similarities, mainly because all cults share similarities. Q started off as something innocuous on a message board that many suspected was a joke. Om started off as a yoga studio. Trust the plan sounds an awful lot like members who would say, just listen to Shoko. And we've seen followers withdraw from their families and find a new community online with other members. We also see an apocalyptic yet New Age outlook in both groups. Om saw the end of the world in which members would be vindicated and in some cases the only survivors, whereas Q has the storm in which all of their enemies will be vanquished via military tribunal and executions, and a new awakening will come. In fact, some Q followers have also run for office, and unlike Om, some look like they might win. We like to think that fringe groups stage fringe, and in many cases they do, until they don't. Look at Jim Jones and Charles Manson. And before anyone says, well, that's absurd. An internet conspiracy can't hurt anyone. It already has. QAnon already has violence associated with it. The FBI warned that it could actually be a domestic terror threat. One, one follower killed a mob boss. One threatened to kill a presidential candidate. One man took his gun and fired shots at Comic Ping Pong Pizza, which is a supposed site of child abuse and sacrifice. And to the shooter's credit... After he saw that there was no basement, uh, he admitted that some of the intel maybe wasn't 100%. There was even a Massachusetts man who led police on a car trace through New Hampshire with his wife and five kids in the car. What's going to happen if this storm never comes? Om, um, along with like Jim Jones and Charlie Manson, those are obviously worst case scenarios. And we can always hope that the fringe just stays fringe, but we can't always assume it will. So... Thank you for watching, and as always, look for sources in the comments. If you want to do some research, you can use our EBSCO databases available through the library's website. See you next week.